Uh, sadly, I wasn't throwing cobblestones in Paris at the time, um, but hopefully this will be of interest. <coughs> 68 was a really amazing and exciting year, and I'm going to talk about the things leading up to it and during it that made me a revolutionary socialist. I was brought up in Osset, which is four miles from Dewsbury in West Yorkshire, and my granddad was the branch secretary in the local coal mine, so I was brought up listening to his stories about the general strike. In 1964, we were all really excited when the Labour government was elected after 13 years of Tory rule. I joined the Labour Party and was active in the Young Socialist Group, first in Dewsbury, and then we set up our own group in Osset. Labour only had a majority of four in 1964, so that was the reason we gave for why they weren't able to do very much. But they increased their majority to 96 in 1966, as so we really expected to see change that would benefit working class people. In 1966, I was in the winning team in the National Young Socialist Speaking Contest, um, and I brought my medal along. <laughs> And the topic we spoke on was, you know Labour government works. <laughs> <laughs> However, we soon realised that it didn't. We were let down time and time again over housing, the economy and foreign policy. Class was important to us and our young socialist group raised money for strikers like the Hull Seaman and the engineering workers at Robert Arundel in Stockport who were all sacked and replaced by cheap labour. The civil rights movement in America and the anti-apartheid struggle in South Africa were also very important to me, as was fighting against racism here. Osset had a population of 15,000 and there were four black families who lived there. Enoch Powell had encouraged workers from India, Pakistan and the Caribbean to come to work in the mills and other industries. Workers from Pakistan came to work in the mills in Dewsbury and the local paper really whipped up racism against them, talking about people sleeping four or more to a bed and how one group of people would get out of the bed and the other people would come back from the mill and they'd get into the bed. And it really portrayed people as having some kind of alien lifestyle and being very different from us. And they're really sort of stoking up um, racism in exactly the same way that the press does today when they talk about refugees and asylum seekers. Now, one of the most blatant ways that racism was expressed at that time was in the 1964 Smethic by-election. And this is often remembered by the vile racist slogan of the Tory party. But we also need to remember the way that Labour reacted. In their eve of election leaflets, they wrote, Be fair, immigrants only arrived in Smethic in large numbers during the past ten years, while the Tory government was in power. You can't blame Labour or Gordon Walker for that. Labour favours continued control of immigration, stricter health checks and deportation of those convicted of criminal offences, which is all too common what we hear from Labour today. Labour completely pandered and indeed encouraged racism. We campaigned against racism in a number of ways. If we heard that a pub had a racist landlord, we'd go there after a meeting and a couple of us would go in and order our drinks and they'd get put on the bar. Then another couple would come in and we'd add their order to it and more and more and so we'd have about ten drinks lined up. And then when the two Asian comrades came in, if the landlord said, I'm not serving them, we'd say, well, you're not serving us either and walk out and leave this bar for <laughs> Now, 1968 was a great political exciting time and a time of great upheaval. And at school, we, you know, instead of studying, we spent time reading Karl Marx, Chairman Mao and various other people and debating ideas and the events that were going on in the world. We'd read Marx on profits and we decided that profit was wrong. And we were running the school tuck shop at the time and we saw this as our chance to strike a blow against capitalism. <laughs> so, so we sold enough sweets to get back the money that we'd spent and then gave the rest away. <laughs> but the head teacher banned us from, um, from running the tuck shop. <laughs> so really there are lots of different ideas and things going on. In spring 68 I was a delegate to the Labour Party Young Socialist Conference and this for me was really amazing. I couldn't believe that there were people who were putting into words the way that I felt about the world. And this was my introduction to international socialists. And I left the Labour Party and joined IS. 
Now, it probably won't surprise you to know that with all this debate in the world and supporting strikers that I screwed up my A-levels and I couldn't go to college. Um, but I decided to leave home anyway and move to London. And four days before I left home, Russian troops invaded Czechoslovakia. Now, there was one slogan of ISSWP that encapsulates our view of the world, and that's neither Washington nor Moscow, but international socialism. And what America was doing in Vietnam was wrong, in the same way that what Russia was doing in Czechoslovakia was wrong. Both were acts of imperialism. And the day I left home, I left my um, suitcase at the left luggage office in uh, King's Cross Station, met up with comrades, and we went down to the Russian embassy, and that was my first ever demonstration. Now, the events of 68 made me a revolutionary, and joining I has helped me to make sense of what was happening in the world. Being able to keep making sense of this world is crucial, and the party's been key on that on many occasions. I remember particularly when the miners were defeated in 1984 after a year-long strike. It was crucial that we understood the objective political situation, the state of the economy, the role of the Labour Party, leadership, and the role of the TUC, and so on. And the SWP was key in explaining that. Now, we're always facing new situations, and we need to be able to understand them and work out together the best way forward. And this is whether it's fighting against victimisation at work, against war, stopping the BMP, or in understanding the experience of respect. The 68 made me a revolutionary socialist, and it's SWP that's helped me to stay one. Yeah.